do give honor to God. And we thank him, amen, for another opportunity to open the doors as we, we don't say that just as a routine thing. Uh, it, it is a blessing to be able to serve. Uh, we give honor to First Lady, amen, to the officers, members of the church, those of our members that are absent on today, our guests, amen, family and friends, those uh, that are with us through social media, God bless you. Thank you for joining with us on this morning. Um, if you turn with me, got a real juicy of scripture to come from on this morning. God just would not let me go. Uh, and uh, from last weekend. So, but the base scripture for the sermon is going to change on this morning. We're going to be coming out of Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the fourth verse. Very interesting text, and we're going to just deal with some things on this morning. <clears throat> and again, that is Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse four. And there you'll find the word of the Lord saying, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Very brief scripture, but lots and tons of wisdom and power therein. I want to reason with you just for a little while on this morning from the same topic of last week. Uh, it therefore is entitled, Since When Did the Chastisement of the Lord Cause Physical Pain? Part two, amen. And we spoke from that topic on last Sunday. And as I said, uh, God just would not let me go with it. I, I had other things that was on the plans for this morning and something else I wanted to get into, but God would release me from this. And being a preacher solely based upon the teaching of principle, there had to be more said about this to bring us into a place of understanding. Last week, we spoke from this topic and we talked about or uh, identified what chastisement exactly is and how we become weary of it. In fact, uh, just a small summary, we talked about uh, chastisement actually being the word of God, being the wisdom of God's word and the weariness of it uh, being that when it challenges who we are and who we want to be, we get weary of it. We don't want to hear the truth. Uh, we don't want to hear that we're not where we think that we are. And we get weary of hearing the word of God. When you go to many churches, you're, you're involved in the singing and the dancing and the clapping, but then when the word of God comes, you want to put the finger up and exit out the door or you want to fall asleep. It, this is where we get weary of hearing God's word. But on this week, we want to reason from how we come to the, how we even resonate at the thought of chastisement having anything to do with pain. And with that being said, we, we come right back to this scripture that says for the fathers to not provoke their children to wrath. And, and, and I just want to put the disclaimer out there, it's going to appear that I am coming against spankings. Let's just put it out there. It's going to appear that I'm coming against that, but I want to give you the principle and understanding of God's word concerning it. And we talked about last week that sometimes how beatings will put them as we say it are ineffective with children. We beat our children and 
they wind up doing the same thing over and over again. And you and you say, I, I'm trying to get <clears throat> this thing out of them, and they just continue on doing it. And when this, when you look at this scripture, it is very provoking. And 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 it says not to provoke our children to wrath, but wrath then needs to be defined for us as the actions that one does when they're angry. This is why the Bible tells us to, to be angry and sin not. Therefore, I always teach that the very, the most, uh, the most precious thing you can do when you're angry is absolutely nothing. Because no matter what you do or say, you'll wind up regretting it once you calm down. So, when you push somebody into wrath, or when we imagine how a father or a parent, let's put it that way, would push their child into wrath, we talked about it last week, if I beat you and tell you I'm doing it because I love you, but you can't hit me back, that kind of would provoke a person. Amen? We, we, we then come to understand that at the end of the day, we beat our children for one reason. Because when we were kids, we were beat. And because when they were kids, they were beat. So we come to this traditional thought pattern of spanking being chastisement. And therefore, chastisement being associated with pain. But I know, let me, let me go ahead and get out ahead of my part-time Bible scholars that will tell you well, the Bible says that foolishness is in the heart of a child, but the rod will drive it far from them. Yes, that's what the Bible says. But let me remind you of the words of David when he said in the 119th Psalm, 11th verse, In my heart have I hid thy word, the rod, that I won't sin against you. Yes, foolishness has to be driven out of my heart, but the word has to be replaced therein so I don't operate in sin. So there's never a time that chastisement can exactly be associated with pain. And I know what you're thinking. We, 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 we think that because we are looking at God in a sense of chastising his people over time, we look at the Old Testament and we say, well, Preacher, well, God kicked Adam out of the garden. He had the earth open up and swallow Korah and his followers. Uh, uh, he, 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 he came against <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah for their actions. But I need to cause you to understand that there is a difference between chastisement and what we have mistaken as judgment. You see, <laughs> yes, God kicked Adam out of the out of the garden, but this was not chastisement. Chastisement was the wisdom that was forgiven. This this wisdom was when He gave the commandment that you should not eat of the fruit, lest you die. With Korah, Moses was already given as instruction for how you should operate. He came against chastisement. He was wary of chastisement. Sodom and Gomorrah had instruction. So what I'm trying to cause you to understand again is that chastisement is wisdom. Chastisement is correction. The word of God is correction. It even says so. But judgment when corrective action is not effective. You see, when you do not choose to operate by the word of God, and you choose to be wise in your own mind and do your own actions, it comes with things called repercussions, consequences, death. This is the way to sin, the Bible tells us. So when we are experiencing pain, what we usually want to say is that God is chastising me. But is it God chastising you or is it the repercussion of your action? 
So when we are dealing with pain, God is not beating up on us. Chastisement of God has never had anything to do with pain. The word says that he so loved the world that he gave us his son. His son was killed for the chastisement of our peace. And again, we start to look at pain being associated with chastisement. But even though they drove the nails through his hands, even though they whipped him and beat him all night long, his life was about chastisement. But because the chastisement that he was given out came against the traditional beliefs, they got angry. And the word tells us that angry men deal foolishly. So there was a foolish act. The word tells us because Jesus cried out, forgive them for they know not what they did. They are in the ignorance and they're angry because chastisement has come against what they believe. Chastisement has come against the wisdom of their own mind. So when we do things that cause pain, it's because we're angry. We're frustrated. Think about, think about this. Whenever you have spanked your children, it hasn't really been that you were giving them wisdom. It was because you were angry. It's because you were frustrated. They may have embarrassed you. But we do these things and it has not really given them any reason for why we did what, the, what they did what they did. But I need you to understand something. We say, well, I beat them because they did this. I beat them because they did that. Well, how about we allow somebody to enter into that whooping party and beat on you because many of the times your children are emulating the things that you do in the first place. So the word says to raise them in the admonition of the Lord, which means for you to raise your child in the way of God, you must be the first example. But when we're not that example, when we are not acting according to the wisdom of God, how can then our children walk in the wisdom of God? The chastisement shows us how to walk. If we walk that way, then they can walk that way. But we don't want nobody to tell us we're wrong, so we are the ones that want to impose punishment our way for somebody not walking the way we want them to walk. But the Bible does not do that. God does not turn around and take out and beat on you. Watch this. How can, see, we tell our children, again, I'm beating you because I love you. But what happens is we grow up with this thought in our mind that if I love you, I've got to hit you to show it. But then we grow up, and then we say, we say, wait a minute. Love is not supposed to hurt. Love should not beat up on me. And then, but yet, we look at that in every area that is addressed to us. But yet, we turn around and inflict pain on those we say we love. Why? Because it has been ingrained from us from the beginning that chastisement has to do with pain. No, pain has nothing to do with chastisement. Your punishment is a result of judgment. Judgment and chastisement never can be mixed and mingled. Yes, when God took out action against what seems another action, you must always see that there was corrective action that could have been taken. You neglected to see the wisdom of God, so it brought about your own destruction. Your pain is inflicted by yourself. <clears throat> I'd like to remind you of an acronym that I like to use for SIN. S-I-N. Self-inflected nonsense. When you are dealing with pain, it's because you inflicted it upon yourself. It was you that did not want to walk in the way of God. 
It was you that did not want to hear the way of God. So now, yes, your actions are causing you pain. Yes, you are sitting around now thinking that God is ripping up on me when the chastisement of God causes no pain. If you look at chastisement, it would be a comfort. If you did what you were supposed to do, things would pan out according to the way the word says it should. But God is not going to say I love you and hurt you at the same time. That is a way that is only a way of man. It is the way that seems right, but it ends in destruction. We are against each other because all we want to do is inflict pain. We want people to see things our way, and the only way to do that is to try to beat you into our way. Amen, somebody. Once we start to see what truly causes us to think God has put us in pain, it is because we have no self-control. It is because we have no patience. It is because we don't have anything that the Holy Ghost should be giving us. And then we turn around and tell people, and, and, and see, I, I, yes, I'm talking about this in literal terms, but let's talk about it from the pulpit. Many people have children in the faith who they have stirred wrong, who they have hurt and beat up because they wanted to mind control them. They wanted them to see things their way. They took the Bible and beat them over the head with it as opposed to teaching them the wisdom of it. And now, many people don't want to be even associated with church because they have been too hurt. They don't want to sit there because they don't want to hear anything that seems not to even benefit them. People are tired of the word being put to them and only benefiting the person that is saying it. But there's no benefit to them. And what has happened is we have scattered the sheep using the rod as a beating stick as opposed to wisdom and guidance. But the word assures us that we cannot provoke people to, to wrath. We have provoked people into not wanting to have anything to do with God because we have hurt them trying to chastise them. When you try to inflict pain through love, it causes withdrawal. The word says, with loving and kindness have I drawn you. So how is it we become so withdrawn from God? Because we want to beat on people. We want the work. You can't do this. You can't do that. Well, people say, well, what can I do? Why is there liberty and you're trying to bind me up constantly? Why am I always in pain because of what you say? Why is it what you say never a benefit to me? Why is it never a comfort to me? This is what chastisement should do. The word, again, in Psalms comes to us to say, the rod and the staff comfort me. When I know what I'm doing, I can do it right. Now, 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 there is some suffering that comes with being a child of God. <clears throat> that, that suffering comes in the fact that when you are walking in a way of correction, people hate you. It comes, yes, there are mortars. Yes, there are people that have beat you for the word of God, but it comes against what they want to believe in their own mind. And because they are weary of the chastisement of the Lord, they are going to hate and beat on you. This, though, is not something that God is causing pain. This is something that man is causing pain on you. Yes, if you were beat, it's because somebody has gotten angry with how you walk. Somebody has gotten angry with what you know. And the problem becomes is this fight happens quicker in the church than it does in the world. You got people that believe that they're living right, that you can't tell them that you got this scripture a little twisted. And then they will have an argument with you because and get mad at you, don't want to talk to you. 
because you're, you're too smart. You're, you're trying to be too, you want to act like you know everything. No, the word of God is the know-it-all. And if you do what God told Joshua to do and meditate on it day and night, he did not tell you to read it day and night. He said meditate on it. And when you start to meditate on his word, when his word becomes actions in your life, then you prove what it is to, 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 to understand the word of God. You don't have to sit here and have arguments with people about what the word says and what the word doesn't say. You don't have to turn around and take the word and try to beat up on people. All you need to do is be a living witness to what it says. And when you do that, you will not inflict pain on somebody. You give them a choice. You give them the ability for it to be said that the word of God came near to you. You chose not to walk in it. You chose to do what you wanted to do. So when you are sitting there and your actions are beating up on you, don't turn around and say, God is chastising me. God is just working on me because of what I did. God is not taking out actions against you. What you have sown, you are now reaping. The word of God is clear about that. But if you sow into the spirit, you will reap peace. You will reap that peace of mind. You will reap that joy. It doesn't mean that everything's going to go exactly right in your life. It does not mean that you're not going to have haters. It does not mean that people will not come against you. It does not mean that every now and again, things might not seem like they're out of order. But what it does say is in those times, you know that he's with you. You know that he's leading you. You know that you're doing what is right. And that will be more important to you than how you feel. Because your pain is inflicted by yourself. God does not beat you and love you at the same time. You cannot show not one place in the word of God where God has inflicted pain on somebody where correction was not first visible. And again, this pain was not in chastisement. This pain was in sure judgment. Judgment is the end result and the execution when corrective action has done no good. We have all been given instruction. We have all been given an opportunity to follow the word of God. But when your actions come against you in punishment, punishment is the result of judgment, not the result of chastisement. Chastisement is there that you do not have to face judgment. I, I tell you, and I'm getting ready out your way. I'm cutting through the grass today. I need you to understand that the word of God has been given to us. That we don't put ourselves through pain and suffering that should not be upon us. Amen. So many things. Look back upon your <clears throat> life. Look back upon bad relationships. Look back upon people that have hurt you. Look back on things. I guarantee you, the most hurt that you've experienced in your life has been due to an element of anger. It's been due to somebody getting mad about this or that. It's some or, or different elements of anger. Somebody got frustrated. Somebody got embarrassed. Somebody had their personal feelings involved and it caused them to inflict pain. Think about if you walk according to, I, I, I need you to understand, I, I, I got to get you to see this. Ephesians 6 and 4 shows us something that is very important. What if you were the model example to your child? What if the things of God were important to you every single day? What if the things that you hear was important to you? What if the things that you did were important to you to do them according to God's word? You would be an example to your child. Amen. But what happens is you got a potty mouth, so your kids got a potty mouth. You lie, 
so your kids lie. You do sexual things in front of them, so they want to do sexual things. You listen to any kind of music, so they listen to any kind of music. You do what you want to do, so they do what they want to do. You are the example and the result of where they are. There used to be a saying that the apple does not fall far from the tree. When you, as a parent, the word tells you you have a responsibility. And everything your child does is your fault. Somebody might be saying, well, preacher, you are a fool because my child does this and I've never done this. My child does that and I've never done this. Watch this. The word of God gives you a two-fold responsibility. One, you must be an example to them. And two, you must control the environments in which they exist. Some of your kids have friends that they should not be talking to. Amen. Some of your kids are going to places they should not go. Amen. And because they are bringing these ungodly influences in, because you have let them go. So now it's twofold. You're not walking according to uh, chastisement or to correction. See, chastisement is simply correction. I, 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 need, I need to show this to you so that you know that I'm not lying about this. The Word of God says in, in, in 2 Timothy 3 and 16, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and instruction in righteousness. This is the rod. This is what guides you. This is what will comfort you if you know what it is saying to you. If you don't know what the Spirit is saying to the church, then the church cannot walk in order. I'm not talking about the structural building in this congregation. I'm talking about you, the temple of the Holy Ghost. If you cannot receive correction from this word, from all scripture, then judgment is what puts you in pain. If you cannot receive the correction of the Lord in the written form, then what it beats on you is because of what you have sown, not what God has done. God has given you instruction so you don't have to deal with the foolishness of your flesh. Your kids, let, 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 let's put it in a different way. Even when you do beat your child, you tell them that I told you not to do this. And if you would not have done this, you would not be facing punishment. You are facing your punishment because you have done something that I told you plainly not to do. You have given them instruction. You have given them chastisement. Punishment has to do with judgment, not chastisement. But when we mix the two, you'll say, God is punishing me. No, he's not punishing you. You're punishing you. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop going where you're going. Stop being involved with the people you're involved with. Your life Amen. will turn out better. Amen. My mother used to have a way of saying, son, you might not be what people are thinking about you. But you can be guilty by association. I might not be a drug dealer, but I guarantee if I stand on the block with some known drug dealers, you will just automatically assume that that's who I am. Guilt by association is where we are getting hurt from. This is where our pain is coming from because we want to be associated with sin because the things that we love to do are so great. That's why we're in pain. What if you wouldn't gossip in front of your child? Your child wouldn't be talking about other people and trying to bully other people. What if you decided that you were going to model yourself after the word of God? What other choice would your child have seeing you as their hero? But what we don't understand is we've come to a day and time we want everybody else to be our child's role model. We want the music singers to be our child's role model. We want 
the ball players to be our child's role model. Amen. We want this person and that person to be their role model. And then we're sitting around wondering what happened to our child. First, you need to be their role model. Christ needs to be your role model. And if Christ is not your role model, then you are missing chastisement. If you are not allowing the ways of God to change who you are, you are despising the chastisement of the Lord. But when you are sitting here in pain, there is at no time that the chastisement of the Lord brought physical pain. Ignoring the chastisement of the Lord is what brings physical pain. Ignoring that there is correction here for you is what puts you in pain. It is the fact that you do not have discernment that you did not see a person's hidden agenda when you got involved with them. It is not understanding his word that has inflicted the pain upon you. Because not understanding the, the, the wisdom of God's word causes you to walk in your own way. It causes you to sow things you should not sow. But sure as you sow them, you've got to reap them. And now when you're sitting around reaping them, you're saying it's God's fault. Well, let me help again my part-time Bible scholars. Take God out of your mouth and stop saying, God got me in this place. God is chastising me. Start understanding that you are punishing yourself. Chastisement has nothing to do with it. You missed chastisement. You missed the ability to see what you should have done. And now you want God to save you and take you out of your mess quickly. But you took time to sow it. I, I, I need you to, I, I'm, I'm going to graduate. But I, I need you to understand this. When you think about seed, time, and harvest, when you sow something, it wasn't that you, you and when you reap something, it wasn't that you sold it overnight. It took time for you to go out there and do these sinful acts and dig it up and plant that seed and water it and fester it and make sure it grows. The weeds just did not spring up and choke the life out of you. You put them there. And when you put them there and the thorns come up and start to uh, 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 get up on you, get in your skin. God did not put it there. We was talking about parables in Sunday school. Jesus said he came and sowed good seed in the ground. But the devil came and planted his own. You are allowing the devil to plant some things in your life because you are not looking at the chastisement of the Lord. You won't open your Bible any time during the week. You won't meditate on God's word any time during the week. Why? Because you got everything else on your mind. When we start to make God a true priority, how do you make God a priority? It ain't about coming to church. I don't care whether you never go back to church. And that might sound sad coming from a preacher. If you are sitting in church and not understanding his word, it doesn't do you a bit of good. Amen. There are people sitting at their home today talking about they will never go back to church. It ain't because of the preacher. It's because you did not have the ability to see what God's word said even regarding the preacher. He didn't say go to the church because it's got a bishop there. He didn't say go to the church because there's an apostle there. He said go there and see if what they are saying lines up with the word. He said try the spirits to see if it's of God. And if you did not do that, you put yourself in church hurt. Not the preacher. You did. If you said they gave them all they wanted so they could drive a Bentley and you don't even have a car, you can't even afford the bus, you did that. Not them. I know you might, I know you might say this preacher that lost his mind. Yeah, I have lost my mind for God. Because the preacher has a responsibility. The preacher, if you understood what a true man or woman of God was in the beginning, which is in his word, you wouldn't be under some of the leadership that you're under. If you understood that they should love you, you wouldn't have got beat up on. That's why I tell people, 
that I cover. I tell people that God allows me to be a watchman in their life. It is not my job to tell you what you can and can't do. It is my job to give you the wisdom of the word of God concerning your situation. And when I give you the word of God, it's your choice to put it in the application. But if you don't, and the situation comes back and beat up on you, I've had people come back and say, Pastor, I should have listened to what you said. You told me this a long time ago. And I tell them, I didn't tell you anything. I gave you God's word. And now when you decide that you do it your own way, you did this like my mama used to say to me. You made your bed, you lie in it. Amen. That's what a parent does. They tell you, I've given you the wisdom. I tell anybody that I ever counsel. I've told you what God says. I'm not going to give you my opinion, my spin on it. None of that matters. The only thing that matters is what God said. Amen. And when I give you what God said, I can also give you how it's going to turn out. Because both of them are here in this wisdom. Both of them are here in chastisement. But when you have the clerical error to try to go around chastisement, you end up at punishment. And punishment hurts. There's some people that's had a heart ripped out and told me, I don't know why God did this to me. God said, I don't know why you did this to yourself. I told you how to get around it. God, I'm sitting here broke. I, they, they, this, this, this false prophet that sat here took all my money. Well, I told you to try spirit to see me. You didn't. So now deal with it. God, I ain't never coming back to church. Okay, well, you can say this in my word told you not to. We just have to get to a place to where we don't read the word of God, to where we come to understand the word of God. The word of God speaks the same thing to natural parents as it does to parents in the faith. We should feed you with knowledge and understanding. Me giving you a scripture will mean nothing to you if I don't give you the wisdom on how to use it. It's like giving you a car, telling you you want a car that you can never get keys to. You can never move it. It'll sit in front of your driveway, shiny, new, looking good. But you will still be walking. You still will be catching the bus. You'll still be catching a ride because you don't have the keys. And that's what happens. When we go around chastisement, it's here. It's, it, you, you have no excuse. But it, 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 either you want to hear what you want to hear, you want to let somebody tell you what you want to hear, or you want to understand that the word of God. Here, watch, watch, watch this. Love does not hurt, but the truth does. Love comforts you. Love sets you up for success. But the truth, it hurts. The truth is what makes you angry. You get mad when you hear the truth because it hurts you. Uh, ain't no way in the world you can't tell me I ain't living right. I go to church every Sunday. I pay my tithes every Sunday. I'm there every time the church opens. And you're the biggest hell you on the earth. You wouldn't give nobody a piece of bread out of a whole loaf if they asked you for it. You don't have any way or sense about putting somebody before yourself. You don't have the, 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 the notion to do anything that the word says. All you do is make excuses for not doing it. But then when those weeds come up and choke you out, it's all of a sudden God chastising you. It's all of a sudden God doing this to you. I tell you as I'm closing, seriously, it's not. The chastisement of the Lord is before you all the time. It is a light to your path. It, it will guide your foot. It will put you in the right way. It will bring comfort to you. It will bring peace, joy, understanding to you. Or you can do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Live how you want to live. This is my life. Okay, it's your life. But when you got to give it up, 
and get punished for an eternity because it was your life. It's because you disregarded chastisement. It's because you could not see to do things God's way. It's because you did not, and, and, and we all, let, let, me, let, me, let me clear this up for you. We all have this issue. All of us have that sinful thing that we love to do or things that we love to do. And when we, and while we are doing that, we never choose to think in our mind that we can get caught in the act of doing these things. We, death can come while you're doing these things that you love to do. And then what will be your response when you unknowingly die and wake up before the throne? I, 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 but, but God, there's no but God then. It has to be readily and evident in your mind now that everything I need to do, I must be pressing toward the mark. Because I don't know where the last moment is. Because I don't know when judgment is. I need to take chastisement in. I need to take his words and put it in my heart so I don't sin against him. But if you still look at the rod as something you have to be beat with, you're contending with a bad thought. It will cause you to try to inflict pain on somebody else. It will cause you to try to chastise somebody else by beating on them. It will cause you to say, love shouldn't hurt you, but I can use love to hurt you. Think about that. Love shouldn't hurt when it comes to me being in pain, but love is good for you when I want to inflict pain. How can that be? How can it even be? You will have some suffering that goes along with being a child of God. But that suffering will come from the anger of those that don't want to accept it. It won't come from God. God does not want to hurt you. He, he loves all of us. His only desire. God, it's, somebody needs to hear this today. God has a simple will. If you don't know what the will of God for it, for your life is, it's simple. It's the will that he has for everybody's life. That none should perish. Pain goes with perishing. That's not God's will. So if it's not God's will that you perish and be in pain, how, since when did his chastisement cause it? The inability to follow his chastisement is what causes your pain. But again, and I'm closing, I promise you right now, whenever you try to bypass chastisement, you end up in punishment. You can't take chastisement away. There's no way you can take chastisement away. How do I know? Because he says his word will stand. When heaven and earth both pass away, the word will stand. Chastisement, correction will always stand. <clears throat> So when you bypass it and don't elect to be chastised, trust me, you will be punished. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I think that God's name is pointed.